Right everyone, uh, welcome back. It's been quite a while since the last video that I put up. Um, but this one here, I've had quite a few people asking um, how I do this particular uh, task with my cabinets and my conversion kits um, and pretty much any one of my builds that use these type of submersible pumps. Um, this will work on this type, on the, the stainless type. Um, most of the hardware store pumps that you'll get, or online pumps that you'll get, this sort of thing, side discharge um, with the plastic housings, most of them that I've pulled apart in the past have been pretty much the same. So unless you're getting one of the more um, high quality pumps that have like the oil bathed seal, um, for example, or the heavy cast iron style pumps um, will be different. But most of these low cost pumps that you get will be in some uh, configuration similar to what I'm doing here. So um, what I'm going to be doing, uh, first of all, is I'm going to strip it apart and then we've got to deal with some of the wiring. Um, I'm not going to go into too uh, deeper specifics as to the wiring side of things. If you're not confident with doing the wiring with these, uh, then get someone who is um, an electrician or um, anyone who works with this type of thing regularly. But uh, as I say, if you're not confident doing these, do not undertake this part. You can use this video uh, to strip it down and then get an electrician to do any of the electrical side of things. Um, but as you are working around water and you usually got your hands inside of a steel cabinet with the water rushing around, this isn't the sort of thing you want to be messing with if you don't have a pretty good grasp of what's going on. Um, most of these pumps will have one of these, a float switch in some configuration or another. Um, and some people just cable tie it or screw it or um, put some kind of bracket on just to make sure that it stays in place. Um, but I like to get rid of them, it looks tidier without them and a lot of people um, are the same, they want something tidier or they just don't want to be dealing with the additional stuff. Maybe they've got um, considerations as to how much space they have, um, but I just think it looks tidier. So um, we'll strip it down, um, like I say I'm not going to go into the wiring but I'll just show you sort of how these things come apart um, and we'll go from there. So if we get the camera to come in, start just by pulling the top off. So on these pumps, the handles will come off first and then they will allow access in there for these screws. Now these type of screws, um, they're a tri-lobe or a, a three-star, they call them a number of different things. They're, they're actually a safety screw, so the average Joe Blow doesn't pull them apart. Um, as, as I say, if you're not confident doing these, do not undertake this task. Um, what I've done, you can buy them, there's this, I don't know if it's going to focus or not. Um, originally, before I managed to track down one of these, I ground up an old screwdriver. Um, but that's effectively uh, what you need to get these apart. I've got one set up in the drill. Sometimes these are quite tight, um, but so far I haven't had any issues. Um, putting them in a drill like this seems to be a little better because you can keep the weight on it while they're unscrewing. No issues so far. And last one. Um, as for the cable, usually at this point um, I cut it. If you're using the plug still and you're going to plug it into the wall, leave it on there. Um, but just the way I use them, they go through a different set of wiring. So I just work out pretty much around about how much I'm going to need. Maybe give a little extra, it's going to be wastage anyway. Uh, and then I'll just cut it there. And then uh, what I should have mentioned as well, before you start, uh, make sure that you plug it in and the pump is okay. Uh, most of the people that um, I've spoken to have been uh, running the pump already so they know the pump works. But if it's come straight out of the box like this one, um, just do as I did before um, the video. Plug it in, um, make sure your, your float switch is in the correct position and just make sure that the pump runs because once you've undertaken this then it's no longer under a warranty. So if you just test it, make sure it works. Um, that way, if there are any issues, you can take it back and get it replaced uh, before you undertake this job. Um, and that way you know um, that the pump is good and if it doesn't work afterwards, that something has occurred. Um, I've pulled these apart lots of times now, so I know how they go back together um, in the correct orientation. But if it's the first time you're doing it, 
Sometimes they have locators inside, otherwise just mark it with a pen or something so you know how it goes back together um, and it can just save some hassles later. So we'll just give it a bit of a wriggle. Sometimes they're quite tight. There we go, the whole pump will come out, leaving just the housing at the bottom and then this pump unit here. Um, this is held in usually just by an o-ring in there. They're compressed together. The top of this pushes into the bottom of the o-ring and the o-ring seals around the pump and it keeps the top half dry. So it can be quite tight to get these out sometimes, but if you just jiggle them back and forward, they will come out like that. So next thing, I'll cut this off. No longer need that anymore. So that's gone. And then the rest of the wiring will be dealt with in here. Like I say, I'm not going to go too in depth as to how this uh, particular task is done. I'm just going to go ahead and do it and I will display uh, how I've dealt with this. There are a couple of ways of resealing it once you remove uh, the switch line, the cable that goes to the, the float switch. It's out. So that there is a little capacitor. Um, your, your run capacitor, start run capacitor. Um, so make sure you don't damage any of that wiring. You've got to be very careful as to what you remove. And then we're just going to pull through that float switch. Yeah, it's out of the way now. And then the last thing we need to do is this little tag that the float switch was around. Don't throw this away, we need it, but you want to pop it out first. So just gently, uh, if you damage the top half of it, that's not that big a deal because we're going to be cutting a good portion of that off. The lower half is the part that's important. This one's being a little bit stubborn, sometimes you've got to twist them and push it through. That's it. So that's it there. So you want to hang on to that. Um, now I'm just going to quickly go through and do the wiring. I'm going to clip off the earth as closely as possible. And this part I'm just going to kind of skip through. This is the part that um, if you're not comfortable with, you shouldn't be doing. Get rid of that. So the next part, sealing it up, is probably the question I get asked most. Um, many of the guys who are happy to pull their pumps apart and rewire it, uh, they do so and um, sometimes they do it because they have issues with the, the float switch and they just want it to work. They don't mind the float switch when it's sitting uh, in the water there, even if it's not actually doing anything. Um, but some guys, um, particularly the ones that ask, um, me how I do it um, they're the ones that are looking either for considerations such as as space or or just trying to make it look tidier um, they'll contact and ask how I do uh, this it's actually the sealing up that they don't know um, they're usually pretty happy to be doing the wiring um, but it's getting it to seal um, that they have questions about so the way I used to do it this is the the clamp that holds um, holds in the seals, it just compresses them and the cables run through it. If I just grab that cable there, there's a retainer on the bottom there that just slots on the inside up and that way like that and then that pushes up against the bottom of that seal something like that and the compression between here and here is what actually seals it all up. So that's how um, the, the previous setup used to work. Um, what I'd do Previously, I'd cut this lug off, it gets in the way. I would then cut just that part there out, the large part, and then I'd put a, a stainless steel nut and bolt through it so it would sandwich it together. Um, but I wasn't happy with that, it didn't look the way I wanted to. So I went and made this up. This is a 3D printed um, little stopper that goes in there. So effectively, I just measure about where it comes to like that. Um, so I cut it in one, just like that, and then slot that through, something like that. 
So whereas we used to have this, then that would go through into the seal. Now I've just replaced effectively this part of the cable on this with that little stopper. A little bit ugly, I'm just going to trim it up a bit more. One last little bit. That's it. Now that just slots straight back into where that cable came out down there. Like so. And then pops through. So one thing you want to make sure is when this tightens down, if you've made something like this, you want to make sure that it actually compresses nice and tight. So what I'll do is that goes back in. You want to make sure... Keep your cables as uh, tangle free as possible so that way it'll allow you to lay them the way you want when that goes back in and make sure that everything goes in correctly line these screws up these ones here i do by hand you can tighten them up if you're confident just straight away with uh, with a hand drill or electric screwdriver whatever you've used i like to do this part by hand and i'll show you why in a second just to make sure that there's actually some pressure in the correct space um, to make sure it's going to seal correctly. So, as you would have seen before, this black part here is actually the retainer that holds the seal in place. So what I'm going to do is just hold my finger on the back of it there as I'm tightening down these other two screws. Hopefully that light's okay. And as it comes right the way down, take the slack out and you start tightening it, you should feel it pushing this part through. And if you've already got it bottomed out and it's still pushing through, then you know that there's actually enough pressure on there that it's going to seal against that, that base properly. So now that's nice and tight. We can arrange this clump of wiring. It can be quite messy. Sometimes they leave a, a large tail of insulation on there, uh, which can be a bit of a pain to get it to lay, lay flat. But as long, you see when this is manufactured, see the, the crimps and the wire, the little divots there. When they put it together, they haven't made sure that it's laid right and it's actually pinched between the body of the pump and the steel casing of the motor there. So you want to try and make sure that that's all sitting nice and low sometimes you can twist it a little bit get it out of, out of the way but you just want to have a quick visual inspection down the side to make sure that they're all sitting low enough that they're not going to interfere um, with the side or get pinched in there that's it so I'm just going to push the seal in part of the way otherwise it's going to be harder to Get the whole thing back together. Should be it. Flip it over. Here's where your marks would have come in handy. Some pumps will actually have indexing uh, marks or indexing lines where uh, there'll be a little tab that'll stick out somewhere so it can only go one way. Um, this pump is not one of those types. But I've pulled so many of them apart, I know what way it goes around and you just want to line everything up properly and then that should close up almost entirely so the only thing preventing it from that gap from closing right the way is the seal. If there's something more in there it means that pump hasn't um, gone in properly. Um, just missing all the screws, there we go. Um, I'm going to have to grab some wires. Drop that out of the way. Let's try that again. Right.
then you just want to make sure without over tightening it that that gap is closing up correctly and like I say if it doesn't close up correctly there's something jammed in somewhere and you want to make sure that you remedy that before you wind it right down but here is our final result I'll trim that to the length properly um, you can leave these off or put them back on I usually like to put them back on uh, especially if you, your setup uh, means that you'll be lifting the pump in and out it's just nice and handy to have something to grab a hold of um, but if the pump lives inside the cabinet and it's not part of the mounting system that's probably not overly important to put these back on And that's it. Um, now is the point you plug it back in and just double check your work. Um, but as I say, the way that I set them up, I'll wire this directly into a into a switching setup. Um, so that's how that is. I'll test it when it goes back in. It's due to go back together very shortly. But as you can see, uh, we've completely eliminated our float switch. And as long as we've done that sealing part correctly, give it a bit of a push make sure it's tight there's no play in there you're going to know that that seals and they're working nice and tight so that's it um probably had about 20 or 30 people ask me this like i say uh, you can do it with a stainless steel nut and bolt going through they just find one that fits your pump most of the, the lower cost pumps you get will be something similar to this um, including the stainless pipe which i'll just grab back in a second This one here has been stripped already, it doesn't have anything in it, but um, most of you that have been looking into building uh, vapor blasters will recognize this style of pump. Um, so that's it for today. Um, hopefully I'll get an opportunity at some stage soon to start answering some more of the questions I've had, do a few more videos, uh, but at this stage we're still tied up with getting the, uh, the cabinets cut out um, and doing conversion kits and nozzles. So um, it's been incredibly busy. Um, I'm trying to stay on top of everything. I've got most of the batches of nozzles done. I'm slowly getting caught up with that, uh, always behind. But at the moment, it's the cabinets that have been taking up the majority of my time. I've just finished one more 8080 um, that just needs testing tomorrow, and then it should be out the door. Um, but if you do have questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask them. If I can answer them through the comment section of my email, I'll do so. Um, otherwise, when I've had a few people ask the same question, I'll try and set aside some time to do another video. So, thanks for watching.